I think the idea for all of the wacky things we're doing uh, with instruction now was really born from a need to meet our students' needs. We realized that in any given classroom, our students were at varying levels. And because our students were at varying levels, we found that giving them instruction in one way just was not working for them. We found that some of our students were disconnected from learning. Uh, some of our students just um, were uh, discouraged by their own progress because when instruction wasn't tailored to the student, it, <clears throat> some of our students were left behind. And so the biggest piece to our model was how do we give our kids what they need and when they need it? And, and, and that was the question that drove all of our improvement efforts. That was the question that drove all of our planning meetings in regards to what are we gonna do now and how are we gonna meet our, our kids' needs so that, so that we can close the achievement gap and take our kids to the next level. I think the key pieces of change began with what did we wanna see improve with our students? So for starters, we want our students to get better grades, obviously, right? We wanted our students to achieve higher on standardized tests. We also wanted our students to, in essence, look like students and sound like students, uh, sound like motivated students, act like motivated students, come to school prepared every day. We want our students to want to learn. And so as we began to flesh out all the different things that we wanted to see from students, that's when we made the decision that if we want more motivated learners, then we're going to have to do a better job of motivating our learners. And so that's where our, our, our model really started from, a need to engage our students better so that they actually, want, uh, they actually want to learn and not them being passive recipients of information. And so as we began to flesh those things out in regards to how are we going to engage our students with the learning, um, how are we going to engage our students better in the process, we first decided that we need to talk to an important component, and that's our students. And so as we began to talk to our students, we began to ask some questions such as, where do you like to learn? Uh, what are your favorite subjects? Um, what do you think you need to work on? And so those questions really started to shift the culture here at Love It, because for the first time, adults cared about the way kids learn and the kids felt that they had a voice and choice about the different uh, components to their own learning. And so I think that sparked a lot of excitement in our students. It prompted the students to be more uh, invested and engaged in, the pro in their own processes. And we began to build with the student in mind and, and with the student being at the table as well. I think in terms of lesson learned, the first lesson that we learned is this is not a neat process, it's not a streamlined process at all. We have to be willing to take risks and try things and, and adapt and change if needed. So we've hit, a, we've hit several roadblocks in our, in our road to uh, building this model for our students. And every time we hit a roadblock, I think what helped us get past those roadblocks is understanding that the roadblocks will happen and understanding that we have to constantly shift and flex our own uh, thinking in order to meet the needs of our students uh, is important to not allow for uh, mistakes or, or, you know, or a wrong uh, direction that we may be going in. It, it just doesn't make sense to continue going in that direction without stopping and, and analyzing if we're doing the right thing. And if we're not, let's change it and let's change it fast. And so I think we've grown in our model because we've been more willing to take those risks for our students. We've been, uh, as a team, we meet regularly so that we're always analyzing and always um, analyzing the data for all of the look for's that we want to see in terms of student achievement, in terms of what we want to see in our students, and we make those adjustments and, 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 and adapt when necessary. We did a lot of work last year uh, growing and, and pushing our kids to achieve. And then we went into this year with a, with a, with a child that was, uh, was at a higher level than we, we had uh, anticipated. And they were more independent. And so now with this, uh, this more independent, this higher achieving student, now we have to go back 
and think about our professional development in terms of meeting their needs as their capacity increases, uh, as their abilities rise, and, and, and now we have to challenge them even more in order to move the needle. And so I think it's a good problem to have. Um, we're, um, we're building systems uh, now so that we can address those things for our kids, helping our, our kids to identify goals for themselves over the summer and as the school year, um, as the new school year is, is, is a summer away. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be ready to, uh, to help take our kids to the next level as we continue to grow our model.